So in this lecture, I'd like to briefly introduce the concept of normal force and weight. And then I'd like to do an example that involves finding both the normal force and the weight of my object. So let's look at the following illustration. Suppose we have some box of mass M resting on a table which itself is resting on the ground. Now note that if you place any box on any table, that box will not move. So that means, according to my first law of motion, if this box remains stationary, no net force is acting on that box. But even though no net force is acting on my box, there are still forces, individual forces, acting on my box. It's just that the net force in either direction is zero. So let's examine the various types of forces that are acting on my object, my box, with mass m. So at all times, gravity exerts a force on the box. So it's pulling on the box downward. And this force is given by the mass of the box multiplied by g. So, but that means that some other force, an equal and opposite force, must be acting on the box by some other object. Because if there wasn't any other force, if this was the only force pointing that were, uh, downward, that means our box would be accelerating. But it's not accelerating. It's in a stationary position. And that means some other force is acting on my box. So what is this force? Well, according to our third law of motion, there's an equal and opposite force created by the table. So in other words, this force force due to gravity is acting on my table, pushing the table down. Likewise, the table is reacting and pushing up on my object with the same magnitude but in a different direction. And this force is, norm, is known as the normal force. It's called normal because it makes a perpendicular or 90 degree angle to our surface. So once again, any object that is placed on another surface will exert a force on that surface. And this force will be due to gravity. According to our third law of motion, an equal and opposite force will be exerted by the surface on the object, called the normal force. And it's called normal because any normal force is always perpendicular to our surface on which our object is lying on. So that's normal force. Now let's talk about the weight. What is weight? Well, weight is the force a certain mass exerts on the surface it's resting on. So in this case, our weight is the force due to gravity. So the force that the box exerts on the table due to the force of gravity is our weight. And it's always given by the following equation, m times g. So the weight of our box is m times g. Notice that scales actually tell you your mass and not your weight. So for example, if the scale reads 100 kilograms, that means your weight is actually 981 newtons. So the way that your scale actually calculates your mass is by first calculating the force that you exert on the scale and then it divides it by 9.81 and that and that gets you your weight or your mass actually in terms of kilo <coughs> kilograms so now let's examine the following example an 80 kilogram man ascends in an elevator that momentarily accelerates upward at an acceleration of 0.3 times our g gravitational constant 9.81 meters per second squared now that man stands on a scale that reads in kilograms. So we have an 80 kilogram man standing on a scale in the elevator and the elevator is accelerating upward. So we want to find during the acceleration what is his actual weight and what does the scale read. So we want to find the actual weight of our man and the apparent weight of our man according to our scale. So before we get into our calculation, let's look at the diagram of our man standing on a scale in the elevator and the elevator along with the man are, accelerate, are accelerating upward with an acceleration of 0.3 times our g gravitational constant. So, note that because our man is accelerating upward, 
That means, according to the first law of motion, a net force must be acting on our man. Because if there was no net force, if our net force was zero, then according to the first law of motion, our man and the elevator would not be accelerating. Our net force would simply be zero. But because there is acceleration upward, that means there must be net force pointing upward. So, now let's find all the individual forces pointing in the y direction, along the y axis because our motion is along our y-axis. It's up or down, in this case it's up. So let's find all the individual forces pointing along our y-axis. So our first uh, force that we're going to look at is the force due to gravity. In other words, gravity exerts a force on our object, the man, and it pulls it downward. And that means the man exerts a force on our scale. Likewise, the scale, according to the third law of motion, exerts a force, an equal force, but in opposite direction on the man. So, the man exerts a force downward due to gravity, and the scale exerts on the man, and the scale exerts a force on the man called our normal force. So once again, it's normal because the force is perpendicular to the surface on which the man is standing, in this case, our scale. So, what, this, what these guys are stating is the following. There is a net force going upward. In other words, one of these guys is smaller than the other one. One is larger, one is smaller. So let's choose our up direction as positive and our bottom direction as negative. So these two guys are positive and this force is negative. And because we're traveling upward, that means this force must be larger than this force. Because if these two forces were exactly the same, that means that our net force would be zero. So let's look at the following equation. So, according to our second law of motion, the net force, or the sum of all the vectors, pointing along the y direction is equal to mass times acceleration which is equal to the actual sum of our forces. In this case our sum is simply two forces. One force pointing up and one force pointing down. So the normal force minus the force due to gravity. So this guy is positive because we chose our up direction to be positive. So now what do I want to find? Well, I want to find my actual weight and then I want to find my apparent weight read by the scale. So, my actual weight is simply the weight that the person would weigh when he's standing on the surface of the earth. And that's simply m times g. So, in this case, m times g, the actual weight is m times g equals 80 kilograms of mass multiplied by 9.81 meters per second second and that gives us a force in newtons of 785 newtons. Now, that's his actual force, but what is his apparent force? What does the scale read as his force? Well, let's see. To find, the scale, to find what the scale reads, we have to solve for our normal force. So let's bring all, all the variables on this side and leave the normal force on our right side. So let's bring this guy to our left side and leave the normal force on the right side. We get the following equation. And now we simply plug in all our knowns and we solve for our normal force. So we know what this guy is, we just solved for it here. And now we know what this guy is because we simply plug in 80 kilograms times 0.3 which we got from here times our g. So m times a which is the acceleration of the man as he's accelerating upward 80 kilograms times 0.3 times 9.81 meters per second second plus our actual weight gives us our normal force. So our normal force, the force or the weight that our uh, scale actually reads on the elevator when the elevator is accelerating upward is what 1020. So 1020 newtons versus the actual weight 785 newtons. So Whenever an elevator is accelerating upward, the scale will read a higher, um, a higher force, a higher weight.